Hey out there everyone. Um, today is a beautiful spring day here in Salt Lake City. Um, it's long awaited. Uh, the weather here has uh, been a little kind of crazy. So, But it's a beautiful day and I'm grateful for that. That is not just a weather report. It actually leads into what I want to talk about today. So I kind of want to talk about um, how to act or react to our thoughts and emotions. So basically a simple breakdown for me in my life, you know, with it, when it comes to emotions and thoughts, um, simple breakdown for me is I have an intrusive uh, worrisome thought. Um, say it's something I'm worried about that's coming up or it's something that I've been worrying about for a while and can't really help. Anyways, I get the thought, I put emotion behind that thought, and the emotion is usually anxiety, stress, um, whatever. Then I start to um, cycle through that thought and worry, and it starts to um, snowball out of control into this major extravagant um, uh, disaster that's going to happen in the future. Um, so I take a small, simple, worrisome um, thought or something I'm worried about and turn it, uh, mix emotion with it and then turn it into this extreme disaster that's probably never going to happen and uh, I worry about it as if it's already happening. I don't know if a lot of you are like that. Maybe some of you are like that to a lesser degree or uh, whatever, but... I have OCD, so I tend to snowball my thoughts and emotions out of control. So, I used to be enslaved by my thoughts and emotions. I used to let my thoughts and emotions dictate how I act, how I respond. Um, usually how I acted was I get on edge and I get very edgy and snappy at people. And that grouchiness or orneriness comes out. And uh, especially to the ones that are closest to me. And so it seems like with me, um, this stress causes, you know, this, this act these actions in me and these reactions. And it causes me to be unhappy. It causes me to go directly to worry. Uh, which causes me to go to depression. Which the depression leads to a lack of motivation. A lack of faith a lack of uh, happiness, a lack of finding enjoyment in the moment and enjoyment in the things I love, and just downright the world is going to end disaster type mode. And so I found that I used to think, okay, if I can solve this stressor, if I can solve this problem, this emotional stress will all go away and I'll be happy. Yeah, I'll be happy again. But the thing is, unfortunately, if I, replay, if I get rid of one stress or solve one problem, another one takes its place. And then another one's behind that one. And then 20 more are behind that one. And so it's this endless loop of stress and unhappiness and thinking that if I can only solve it, it will go away. But it won't. It won't go away. I can say I'm addicted to stress. I am addicted to stressing about things to the max. I'm addicted to taking a problem and making it extravagant and stressing about it and becoming unhappy. So I listened to um, some podcasts and some YouTube videos on this kind of thing. And there's this great idea I took from it. Um, it's about worry. So if you have a problem or an issue, ask yourself this question, can I solve it or can I not? And if the answer is I cannot solve it, then do you think worrying about it's going to solve it? Do you think worry about it's going to figure it out? No, it's not. So why worry? On a side note, worry actually leads to a decrease in motivation and a decrease of creative thinking. Now you need your creative thinking to solve problems. And when you're unhappy and you're stressed out, you cannot solve problems adequately. So back to the question, can I solve it? The problem, if I can solve it, 
then I take actions to solve it and I don't need to worry because I took the actions and it's solved. So it's a great way to say whether there's a problem or not and if you can solve it or not, don't worry either way because worrying is not going to help solve the problem. That's the basic gist of it. And so I, I like that. But it's hard because, like I said, I'm addicted to stressing. I'm addicted and I have the habit of stressing out. So I'm trying to retrain my mind to not go directly to stress, flight or flight, you know, extreme disasters happening to the world. I'm trying to train my mind to not jump from simple thought to extreme disaster and end of the world crisis. Um, I'm starting to realize that thoughts are just thoughts. They're just words and language mixed up in your head. It's when we add emotion to those thoughts that make them strong. For example, if we have a thought and we mix it with a happy memory, it becomes very ingrained and, and become, has more meaning to us. If we have a thought and we mix it with emotions of stress and anxiety and fear, it will then decrease and make things way out of control and it will also pre it will also make a bad memory and it will also ingrain in us negativity and so it depends on what you um what kind of thoughts you're mixing emotions with um kind of the major what what about the majority of your thoughts, what emotions are you mixing in with the, with the majority of your thoughts? Are you mixing the majority of stress and anxiety with thoughts? Or is the majority, you know, happy, positive things? That's kind of what makes our personality and our characteristic throughout the day. And so going back to thoughts, I just remember I keep it as a thought. It's just words. That's all it means. And you got to detach meaning from it, especially if it's an intrusive negative unhelpful thought that probably isn't true but you still worry about it um you got to basically detach meaning from it you you got to keep it as a thought and we're all going to have thoughts just like on a nice day like today the weather's going to be what it is um, i can't control the sunshine i can't control the rain but I can control how I react to it. So that leads me to my next point. I keep the thoughts as simple thoughts and I try not to attach emotion to them, but sometimes that's not always easy. Um, especially like me, like I said, I, uh, I, I've constantly worry and I constantly attach stressful anxiety to worrisome thoughts. So I'm trying to keep it as a thought. You gotta keep it as a thought. Number two, you gotta realize, okay, what happens in my life, what situation causes these thoughts or what negative situation happens or what negative thoughts occur, I got to remember I can't control that. Um, I can't control every single thought that goes into my head. Um, it's like when you try to control thoughts or suppress thoughts, it's the whole adage of try not to think of a pink elephant you're going to think of a pink elephant. So the further you try to stop these thoughts or to, to control them, the, the more they're going to uh, come out. It's like trying to you know, stop a river. It's going to find a way through. Um, so you've got to learn to kind of direct your thoughts and to direct how you act on your thoughts. So I have the thought and I try not to I try to detach meaning from it. I try not to add stressful anxiety to it. And I just try to explore, you know, what it is and, and what's causing me to think that way. And here comes the biggest thing. So when I have a thought that's negative or unhelpful, or I have a situation that's negative or unhelpful, um, the first thing I tend to do is go to the worry and the depression and the sadness and, oh no, everything's overall is lost type of scenario. Cause it's easy. It's easy to do that when you get overwhelmed. Um, it's easy to get depressed and just want to give up, but I am trying to look at the situation as maybe I could go the other way. Maybe I can think of it as just a moment in time that's negative or unhelpful or just a thought that will pass that maybe there is a solution to it or maybe there is a lesson 
that I can learn in this trial or this adversity and gain better understanding of myself and bettering myself. Hmm, interesting thought. So when adversity comes or trials come, we can get negative and overwhelmed and no, oh no, all is lost. Or we can look for something in this trial or adversity that may help us better ourselves. Interesting, isn't it? So this has been kind of a long video. So I'm going to stop there, but I'm going to continue this idea about when adversity or trials strike, how to kind of better handle them or better react to them. And to leave you on this note, just remember, remember, you may not be in control of your thoughts or what happens to you in life. You may not be completely in control of it, like the weather, but you are completely in control of how you respond and how you act. So remember that for the next time I talk to you guys. Um, hopefully that'll be in a, a few days. But anyways, here, here's enough for you guys to think about. Um, hopefully you like it. Uh, like I said, share the video if you like the video. Um, also keep, you know, comment if you want on things, topics you'd like me to talk about. But anyways, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. I know I will. I'll enjoy the sunshine as long as I have it. And uh, I'll talk to you guys later.